Hello, everyone. Um, happy weekend. Uh, something for the weekend, perhaps uh, even longer term. And, and I hope you're well. Um, thanks for watching. I want to present 10 great research papers, um, huge abundance of educational research, easier to access. Um, and this resource, which you can download on after the video, I'll post the res res uh, resource link uh, as soon as I finish this live stream. Uh, it's signpost 10 uh, I would su suspect, um, I'd be brave enough to say, key educational pieces of research that have influenced me and the profession, uh, particularly over the last 10 years. Uh, so it's going to help you with your own professional learning uh, and school professional development. So whether you're doing um, something for your own interests or for a master's degree or for a, a national professional qualification, uh, middle leadership or senior leadership, these should help. So let me go through, I've got 10 here. I'll go through the first five in greater depth and I will signpost the other five. Um, so the first one is a new one. This was published um, by Evidence-Based Education in June 2020. And what I like about this one, let me just put this slide a little bit uh, bigger. There we go. Um, what I like about this one is it, it unpicks, it brings together lots of pieces of research um, and offers um, kind of four uh, components, uh, understand, create, manage, and present. If we think about curriculum sequencing, subject knowledge, support, uh, creating a classroom to support learning and manage behavior, and then activating all the curriculum content to a point where students can develop their metacognition, um, this brings it all into one place. So they offer 17 elements, and I think this research paper it's about 70 pages in total i've already dipped in and out of it several times and i was lucky enough to kind of uh, proofread peer review this before it was published uh, and it's something i keep coming back to and uh, so you can have a little summary of this on my website uh, the blog post is called the elements of great teaching and there's a, a bit of a kind of heat map or a 360 for all teachers regardless of how long you've been teaching um and there's loads of recommendations in here for your own professional development. Uh, and the kind of the kind of key themes, you know, again, I'll mention that uh, understanding content. So it looks at kind of research on curriculum uh, and developing knowledge, how to create a supportive environment, how teachers can maximize the opportunity to learn and how we can activate hard thinking from structuring, explaining, questioning interaction embedding and activating so there's tons of stuff in here and it's probably my favorite go-to resource at the moment so that's number one number two cognitive load theory um so this one here you know john sweller 1988 it's not a theory of everything but it is a theory on cognitive load theory, particularly in the context of problem solving. Now, again, on my blog, I've done a summary of this beginner's guide to cognitive load theory. A lot of people are talking about, you know, working memory, etc. So let me just give you a little synopsis if you're still new to this. Uh, short term memory is your capacity to store and process information. That working memory is that manipulation um, you know, where we can pro, uh, kind of manage lots of different uh, information. The research I've read says between three to nine pieces of information at once, and generally we lose it 15 to 30 seconds afterwards. Uh, so there's lots in here, lots and lots. And I know people watching this through at least Twitter channels uh, will be very familiar with this, but for teachers watching elsewhere, outside the UK, and in other social channels watching this. Uh, take a look at this. The paper is quite heavy to get through. So if you maybe return to my blog post, which is called The Beginner's Guide to Cognitive Load Theory, you'll probably get, dare I say, at least my opinion. I was gonna say more from it, but I doubt that. But um, at least take a look at it if you're not familiar with the theory. The third paper that I'll recommend here is Marge. Um, so the five principles for learning by Arthur Shimamura. Now, not a lot of people know about this, but it's been out for quite some time. You can actually download the free ebook off his website. So the link to this resource will take you there. Uh, and there's a uh, there's kind of five essential principles for learning which are promoted in this: motivate, 
attend, relate, generate, and evaluate, which are the words, the acronym or the mnemonic MARGE. Um, and I guess the central theme about this book is efficient learning and retention and how it depends on neural activity in multiple areas of the brain. So a lot of things I've been reading researching is how do we uh, strengthen the synapses connections between two neurons to support long-term retention. Uh, so if you're interested in the brain, how we learn uh, and, and how this might influence how you teach, this might be um, a nice place to start. It's an easy book to read. It's a free download and uh, it's going to take your knowledge uh, to a good position of understanding, in my opinion. So that's recommendation three. Number four is cognitive apprenticeship. Again, another piece of research from the early 1990s um, talks about how we can transmit knowledge in the traditional sense, teaching as an apprenticeship where we want to move students from novice to expert. We tend to follow the four models, which you might see advocated in Rosenshine, model, scaffold, fade, and coach. And what this essentially emphasizes is trying to make learning visible. Uh, so three strategies, I suppose, are uh, advocated. The teacher or the student needs to identify the process of the task and make it visible, so that abstract to concrete. Uh, second recommendation to situate abstract tasks. Uh, into authentic context so that students understand the relevance to their work. And then I guess the third one, you know, vary the, 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 vary the diversity of the situations and articulate them so that students can transfer. So I guess, you know, uh, my understanding of this particular recommendation is maybe competitions, real life situations, you know, restoring a broken down area of a local community and the students take part or someone real comes into the classroom other than their teacher. So if you're familiar also, another piece of research not mentioned here is the hierarchy of audience by Ron Berger. Uh, you know, when we bring in other people, it kind of heightens students' uh, motivation uh, with learning. So there's another blog on my site called The Hierarchy of Audience, which is my own synopsis of another piece of research. Um, so there's tons. And again, with all of this context, you need to translate it to suit it back into your own classroom setting, whether you're an early years teacher or a teacher in a virtual school or a referral unit. All of this was what makes teaching very interesting, very challenging, and uh, hard work for teachers because we need to translate all this knowledge. Uh, recommendation five, desirable difficulties. So we know that learning should be hard. And to optimize learning and instruction requires us maybe to go against our intuitions. I'm going very fast. Uh, I'm speaking to you remotely through a screen. You know, so we might want to deviate from standard instruction practices to help manage one's own learning. A piece of research I'm going to put on Sunday suggests to teach slow. Okay, and this is interesting given at least the dialogue in some situations where progress must be seen in a lesson, in, in a one-off lesson and all those types of notions. So watch out for that on Sunday morning when I kind of trump perhaps traditional lesson observations, what purpose do they serve if we cannot evaluate the difference between learning versus performance? And I think that's a challenge for us all. And then to actually teach slower retrieval spaced and distributed practice helps longer term retention rather than cramming it all in and then through a, a school leadership observation cycle trumps all of this research because we want to tick off everything on a checklist so there's loads so you've got five really good bits of research here to have a look at to keep you busy for a long time not just for the weekend uh, and a, a blog coming out on my site on sunday the 4th of july uh, when you can look at learning versus performance the other ones that I would cite in here, uh, many of you will be familiar with Rose and Shine, but not everybody. A lot of people are looking at this as a useful way to design a teaching and learning policy. A lot of my work today, at least remotely through the pandemic, but prior to also was looking at a lot of teaching and learning policies, having evolved my own through Mark Plan Teach and how this has influenced schools, plus Rose and Shine to come up with effective methodology. This, if you've not read number six, 
read the original paper, translate it, look at it. It's not a checklist for teaching. It's a route map. And I guess trying to simplify this uh, in, in an easier fashion rather than all the 17 principles, put me in a corner, I'd probably say model, scaffold, fade, and coach. Uh, and, and thinking about how is that what that might translate into the classroom in terms of your methodology. Um, paper seven, uh, this is the one I'm blogging for Sunday, so look out for that. Learning versus performance. Um, so that's by Bjork and Soderstrom, I think the surname is. Uh, number eight here. So when I give you the link, this um, this paper by Hattie and Tim Pally is behind a paywall. So if you send me a direct message, I'll send it to you anyway. And then this one here, Improving Learning. Uh, Dunlosky et al. 2013, looking at all the different study techniques, self uh, elaborations, so on and so forth. And then the last one, can feedback improve teaching by Professor Robert Coe here in England? So uh, they'll keep you busy for a long time. Uh, the challenge for all our teachers and school leaders currently is we are distracted with COVID. It's exhausting. We've been working flat out. Uh, all this research is available. It's been around for a long time. How do we translate it? to uh, make it easier for teachers to access beyond the complicated language, very detailed pieces of text. How do we then apply this to our classroom, uh, given that research can only recommend, not necessarily tell teachers what to do? And this is the challenge for all teachers. So at least I think it might give you some food for thought. Uh, I hope it's useful. Under the video, once I finish, I'll pin the resource, you can download it. And then either just go and search for these yourself or use my slide to hyperlink to the resources or share it with a colleague. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Uh, have a lovely weekend. I shall be in touch very soon. Uh, bye for now.